Hi guys, welcome back to part two of um, the day after we had a ton of rain in Melbourne. I'm not sure how much we got, but it seemed like around 50 millimeters or two and a half inches. But on Weather Zone, they reported only 15 to 25 millimeters. So I don't know what's going on with that, but trust me, it was the most rain that I've seen here at um, Fruitopia in around 10 years. Um, yeah, and I was getting a little anxious that we might get uh, rain falling into the house. That's how heavy it came down. Anyway, so for part two, I'm gonna be showing the back on this um, very different kind of day as um, the weather has changed again from uh, summer we've gone back to early spring weather so from 25 to 30 celsius we're now back to 15 to 20 celsius yeah a, a, a 10 degree drop in temperature for the whole week ahead not just for today but for the next seven days in melbourne we're back to early spring weather But that's all right, we're, qu we're quite used to it because we live here, right? It's not like we just turned up like, um, you know, our second day in Melbourne. I've been here 56 years and I'm more than, more than used to the um, unstable, erratic changes. I'll be showing you some of the uh, puddles that are still out there after... Um, Mm, let's see how many hours 12 15 16 hours later there's still puddles of water out the back so um let's get to it oh yeah we mowed the lawn as well as you saw in part one we mowed front and back four hours of um, work and um, Kim had to help me because I just couldn't um, I couldn't I couldn't do it alone guys couldn't do it alone so she's a good sport and helped um, mow the lawn here's the coffee plant coming back completely from winter right and it holds all this new growth until the beginning of winter in June Believe it or not, a real um, trooper, but it is eight years old. So I don't think your coffee is going to look like this when you buy it from dailies. It's not, it's not going to look like that at all. Not for at least um, five years. They're very slow growing. And the reason why it took four hours to mow the lawn is because I had to move every single pot off the lawn and um, put it all in there right and then bring it all out again when I was finished mowing so we're talking at least 50 pots because there's more down there which you'll see when we get there right see those down there yeah so a lot of work back-breaking work <laughs> these ones I moved here to the side and just left them there they got um, rained on as well. Another thing, when I um, um, did all the work I showed you guys a few days ago on a previous video, repotting all the mangoes, um, I did that as quick as I could in preparation for all that rain we had yesterday, and I just made the deadline. So. I'm pretty happy about um, um, the results as you can see with the uh, repotting everything is looking really good so we got one two three um, well you can't see back there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten trees that got uh, repotted eleven actually but one of the eleven was already sooking it's that one down there, the first one. So 
that's a, not a result of my repotting because everything else turned out perfect, right? Look at them. Look how healthy they are. That's a result of um, something that was going on with this, with this guy before I touched him in the greenhouse. And I'm guessing it was um, root rot again. Mango root rot strikes again. I don't think it was cold because if it was cold, why didn't the others um, freeze? Huh? Why? It's got to be root rot. Water. Water not draining properly. With uh, This is the original mix I had before. That's what they all had. Potting mix and um, perlite. That's what they all had. So, even so, this guy said, no thanks. Well, he's saying that. Maybe, maybe he'll come back. Pray that he does. But it doesn't look good, especially here at the um, at the center. Doesn't look good at all. See that? It's green up there. That's nice. But once you get down to here, it's black. Black, brown, black, brown, brown, brown. Right, and then you get into the rootstock. So that's the graph there. Not looking good. And the variety is the Florigon. That's the one that's not happy at all with um, that soil. That's what it was sitting in, soil like that. So now that I finished doing that and they all got 50 millimeters of rain overnight, right? Oh, and I got. Um, three or four days of uh, 25 to 30 celsius yeah don't forget that they got a lot of hot warm direct sun all week before i repotted them and then the rain and the reason i didn't do this guy here is because i ran out of i ran out of peat i ran out of peat guys i was one tree short Jeez, I had to go back to Bunnings to get um, more peat for um, Mr. Alfonso, who's doing really well. Right, Mr. Alfonso didn't get uh, the new potting mix. No, sorry, the new um, sandy um, mix. But he's next. Is next. So there it is. There, I got the uh, the new peat and some more tree circles. Been to Bunnings three times this week, and some more sand, coarse sand. Right. So the next project is is to repot that last mango and repot some of these guys with a new mix and uh, i'm not talking about any tree but mangoes i'm doing all the mangoes guys with uh, that new that new mixture the perlite sand mix with a not perlite peat sand and peat mix with some perlite and the ratio i'm using is um, <clears throat> it's around 40% um, peat um, no, let's, hang on, sorry it's around 60% um, um, peat 30% sand and 10% perlite so 60, 30, 10 and I'm doing it for the mangoes only and the jackfruit uh, for everything else, for all the other plants here, they're just going to get um, peat and um, potting mix with perlite, right? No sand at all. You can see here I did the jackfruit as well, just before I ran out of um, material. So um, that's what we're doing, guys. This is the latest experiment. 
No potting mix at all. No compost. No fertilizer. Only heat, sand, and perlite. And you don't even need the perlite. But I'm using it. The plants that I've already repotted using potting mix and perlite, I'm going to leave those as they are. But any new plants that um, come to Fruitopia will be getting that um, peat. Right? And um, some of them, hang on. I think some of them already, I already did. Yeah, this one has the, the peat. Peat, potting mix, and perlite. That's the, um, the peanut butter tree. The big, this is the biggest sook of all, this guy. Biggest sook. So let's see what happens now. The ones that are really sooky, I'm giving them special, special attention with this soil. Just like this mango over here. Another mango. He's got the, um, the new mix. See that? But this one was done two weeks ago. He's got more... Um, he's got an equal amount of sand and um, peat. It's 50-50. So I just backed off on the sand with the new, the new guys over there. And these guys. So as you can see, when we mow the lawn, we use the grass clippings as mulch. This is for the Jamun, Jambulan. It's still spring, guys. Even late spring is gorgeous with these roses. That's the uh, Hass Avocado. After we had all the rain and all its new growth coming, spring growth. There's no sunshine today, so you're able to see the, the color from a dis different perspective. I'm standing on a, on a deck outside the, uh, the kitchen. So I'm about four meters up. And um, the, the house is still a few inches taller than me. So we're looking at a four point I'm guessing 4.5 meter tree now from the Hass. Right? There's the kitchen window and there's a flight of stairs or steps. And there's the the worts also at four four meters or four and a half meters. Same as the Hass. And here we have uh, a lot of the work I've been doing for the veggie patch. And they're all happy, naturally. So there you go, you can still see puddles of water, as I was saying. Not much, but some. This is 16 hours after the rain stopped. <laughs> Check this one out. You don't want to be planting a, an avocado in here. 16 hours later. And you can still take a swim in there. Right? The same around there too, around the uh, Yakon. And then this this back area here, which is the, the back of the property, that's uh, the fence at the back of the at the back of the house, which is totally saturated and uh, well, you'll see, squish, squash. So 16 hours after the rain stopped, I'm still walking in um, puddles. Remember, the property goes from the back, it goes up to the street. And it comes down here to the back. And these guys, these acopanthus, which I want to pull out, they absolutely adore all this water. 
but not for much longer. My plan is to get rid of them. They're too invasive. We got a new banana blossom open a couple of days ago, right there. Well, that hasn't opened yet, but it's come out of the stem, getting ready to open. So it's always a pleasant surprise to see um, bananas shooting out. And here is another banana blossom coming. Here's still partly inside the stem. Right? That's a Ducasse variety. And that's the tallest banana I have at five and a half meters. And I'm surprised it didn't fall over with that storm we had a week ago of 140 kilometer an hour cyclone winds. Look how erect he is. Amazing. There's another view of him. Unfortunately, no Jabuticabas from that flush we had a few weeks ago. I don't know what the heck's going on. But um, all we can do is just keep waiting. But whilst we're waiting, I bought um, half a dozen new Jabos recently from uh, Dailies. But I'm uh, going to have to wait uh, two or three years for those to do anything. Getting a lot of pomelo set on the pomelo, as you can see. A record amount of fruit coming this summer. Maybe 50, at least 50 pomelo. They're everywhere. Looks like we're getting something happening here with the uh, lychee. Hopefully good news. It's a five-year-old lychee. So I think we um, have deserved to get uh, something out of it. More sugar cane here ready to cut down. The pawpaw, American pawpaw, is flushing out a lot of um, leaves now. And there's only two fruit or fruitlets that I see. With those uh, wild storms we had, it dropped almost all of them except for these two so there's one there and it's a single which is strange because these, these usually come in threes or fours but this one is coming as a single and so was the other one as well that's also coming as a single which is um, very different all the ones that fell they were threes and fours. So a single here and um, a single there. Hopefully they stay on so we can get our first um, taste of uh, American pawpaw, guys. The protected loquats are ready, or some of them are. These are the nice big fat ones. The skinnier or smaller ones have just about gone because of the birds, but all, all our bagged ones are, are ready to go for us. Otherwise, we wouldn't get any. So 
So from this seedling here, I've got a couple. And look how big they are. They're almost as big as eggs. Nice. See what the birds do? See that? Anyway, compare um, the regular loquats with these big ones. Look at that. See the difference? They're over twice as big in size. So don't stop. Don't give up on uh, low quad if you get these little ones. There's these as well. There's only a couple of kiwi berries remaining on the vine. All the rest fell to the ground, probably from the wind and the hard rain. Hopefully this one stays on. And there's the other one. So it'll be interesting to see what it does in subsequent years. This is its first year flowering and fruiting. Grapefruit tree is coming along nicely. Looking forward to these beauties. long and maybe giving us some uh, fruit this year I'm not sure if that's a, a flower cluster we're just um, pointing out growth same here And more here. Too early to tell. And again here. We have some uh, strawberries that are on their way, except uh, <coughs> the animals or the critters always beat us. See that? So we rarely ever get to taste our own strawberries. You snooze, you lose. I planted some garlic couple of weeks ago and it's coming up nicely some oregano Thai basil dill parsley coriander cilantro Sage, perennial basil, rosemary, thyme, mint, lemon balm. and Italian basil cardamom not sure if this is cardamom ginger or um, true cardamom not sure 
but one thing's for sure it hasn't flowered in um, eight years it's huge in ground curry tree bay leaf tree 20 years old a monster in ground my yogi ginger and lemongrass which is currently uh, flowering And to wrap it up, guys, these are the, um, the final greenhouse plants which I took out of the greenhouse last week when we were expecting the warmer weather. So the two uh, yellow jabaricabas from Dailies, the Amberella, that's the uh, Davidson Plum, which is finally waking up took its time last year it woke up in August and this year it woke up in October every year is different so back here underneath the ice cream bean and look at all look at all the ice cream beans that fell that weren't picked by us the tree just dropped them too many look two people can't eat um, 200 ice cream beans but we had our fill so um, that's the Tahiti um, black sapoti which is coming back with a lot of new growth everywhere and here I put the imbi three imbi from the greenhouse and uh, put pitomba so that's gonna be their new home now over summer underneath the uh, fuerte avocado right they're underneath this tree here and the um, ice cream bean so they're getting good protection from frost and wind not that we're gonna get any more frost but yeah the gyro persimmon is really taken off this year and uh, it's leaning over there so I'm gonna have to bring it over here so it doesn't collapse it's got a lot of heavy set of fruit so I've got a string there which I put last year but that's just a string that can snap any moment and it's only tied to uh, this wire it's not even tied to a post the uh, bougainvillea wire that the bougainvillea is climbing on that's all it's attached to <clears throat> The Fuerte Avocado, still flowering, still setting new shoots. I don't see any fruit set yet, unlike the other avocados which have all set. There's the Monstera Deliciosa doing its thing. Babaco coming back with new growth. And down here, guys, are the last um, plants I wanted to show you from the greenhouse the super um, sensitive the purple mangosteen that's been out for a week now and uh, we're gonna have temperatures down to 8 Celsius overnight this coming week but I think um, it should be able to survive and the miracle fruit is there too or miracle berry I'm gonna repot that and put this one in um, Azalea mix as it likes it acidic and I've got the Aracha boy um, what's that down there that's uh, a jackfruit the uh, crisp seedling over there 
and a couple of um, dive bags from winter, hoping they'll come back to life. Um, Imbi, the old Imbis I had, and Capel Apple. Yeah, crossing my fingers and uh, another Imbi. So as you can see, Imbi is pretty hard. That's why I got three new ones. See what happened from winter? Hmm. I don't know how long the video is, but um, we're gonna wrap it up now with the uh, Fino de Hete Cherry Moya, which seems to be waking up with not growth, new growth, but um, fruit buds or flower buds. Just like the um, Paxton Prolific I showed you in part one. And these are everywhere, all over the tree. But they're so small, you need a microscope to see them. Right? They're everywhere, like countless. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to uh, see you from the next video, hopefully. I'm going to be making a lot of short videos for people that don't like these long videos. So they only have to suffer for two minutes instead of 30 minutes. That's the fruit we're waiting for on the, on the cherry moya. <clears throat> so this way everyone's going to be happy the um the star fruit are just slightly waking up now this is the latest i've seen them ever wake up uh, it's so slight that you can't even see it you have to really squint to see any new life coming on the on the carambola <clears throat> all right guys thanks for watching and uh please like and share Especially if you enjoy long videos, let me know in the comments. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we'll see you soon, guys. Bye. That's the jujube. With lots and lots of uh, fruit coming. This is the second year for the Lee.